All right, guys, we're back. Sorry about that. I had to switch things up and then kind of rebuild my OBS studio to work on my fitness channel because usually I'm only using it on my gaming channel. But we're back, and we're going to be talking about some top, some of my top cutting tips to help you guys start to get shredded for the summertime but not waste any of your own time. Hey, what's up, Riyadh Anime? Fasted cardio... <laughs> Caffeine and BCAAs. <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Is that much better, guys? Does that sound a lot better? Yo, yo, yo! It's like um, 1030 at night uh, where I live right now. Hey, what's up, Wayne Kerr? Wayne! Yo, I got a question. Oh, that's a lot better. Okay, guys, this is what we're going to do from now on then, because I think this is going to make it um, a lot easier for me as well. Oh, nice, Master Roshi. Yeah, we, we, we could tell that from uh, watching you on Dragon Ball. <laughs> How to improve the rope climbing skills. Um, that Honestly, rope climbing has a lot to do with technique versus upper body strength. A lot of people don't know how to wrap the rope around their legs as they're climbing up. <laughs> There's a movie with Chuck Norris in it. Oh my gosh, guys, what is the name of that movie with Chuck Norris where the kid is like imagining himself being trained by Chuck Norris all the time and there's like a sequence where he has to climb a rope. Does anybody know the name of this movie? Please put it in the live chat so I can see. <laughs> okay, so I want to be able to to get to your questions, guys. Obviously, there's a lot of you asking questions in the live chat. But the main point of this video is I do want to talk about uh, some tips, my top tips to cutting without having to do a crash diet. So I want to spend some time really quick talking about that. And the reason why is because I actually have a lot of um, online consultations that I do. I do a lot of consultations with people all over the world through Skype. And then obviously I do things in person as well. And whenever it comes time to start cutting or even if it's just losing weight, it doesn't even – oh, yes, sidekick. Yes, thank you because that was going to bug me until I was able to Google search it later. Sidekicks. That movie is so cheesy, but you have to watch it if you've never watched it. Um, <laughs> So basically what happens is when a lot of people start cutting or if they're trying to lose weight in general, the first thing that kind of goes out the window is the diet. A lot of us think that we need to just eat less to start cutting. We need to eat less to start losing weight. And obviously eating less is a factor. And that's why tracking your meal plan macros is so important. You know, a lot of times when I when I work with people and I tell them, hey, I want you to start tracking your macros and then in four to five weeks from now, we're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk about what you've been eating over the past four to five weeks. And I would say 50% of the time when I sit down to, to have another meeting and talk about macros, my clients don't track their macros. So it's pretty much impossible for me to recommend eating more or eating less if I don't know what they're eating in general. But what a lot of times happens is they just tell me, well, I stopped eating as much food or I stopped, you know, I, I restricted my calories and they end up eating like 1,000, 1,500 calories a day. If you guys immediately start going to restricting calories when you're trying to cut, a few different things can happen. Number one, if your muscles aren't getting the the nutrition that they need, obviously to sustain, your body's gonna your body's gonna start breaking them down, you know, for energy. All right, muscles are filled with all kinds of nutrients that your body can use for other things if it's not getting it from food. And for a lot of you guys who have a hard time losing weight or for a lot of you who are having a really hard time losing that like last bit of body fat, you know, a lot of us get down to like say like 10, maybe 11, maybe 12% body fat and we just can't seem to get rid of that last layer of fat that's covering the abdominal area or just can't quite start to see the cuts in your arms that you want to see and you think it's because you're eating too much. But what ends up happening guys, if you cut your calories too much, your body is going to start to go into this mo like survival mode where it starts to think, oh my gosh, I'm not getting as much food as I used to get. I'm going to have to start holding on to more body fat as like reserve energy so that I can tap into that when I need it. So believe it or not, even when you're cutting or losing weight, 
your calorie consumption is still going to be kind of high. And what what's up to you is just like when you bulk, when you start to bulk, right? Let's say you're eating 2,000 calories a day right now. If you're starting to bulk and you have to be eating 3,000 to 3,500 calories and you've never eaten that much food before, you don't just go from 2,000 to 3,500. You do it in steps. You do like 2,000, then three to four weeks later, you raise it up to like 2,300. Then another couple weeks later, you raise it up to like 2,800, 2,900. And you, you do it in a stepping stone process so that your body can get used to digesting and utilizing all the extra food it's getting. Well, the same thing when cutting, guys. If you're currently on a bulk and you're eating like 4,000 calories a day, and then tomorrow you drop it down to 2,000 calories, your body's going to freak out. And it's going to do some interesting things like starting start to hold on to more body fat or just not let it go. So one of the biggest things you can do when cutting is like dial your calories down bit by bit. Don't just do a major jump. And please make sure you're tracking your macros to make sure you're at least getting enough protein to maintain the muscle that you have and you're getting enough carbohydrates to sustain the energy you need for your workouts especially if you're doing the same workouts while cutting bio diver how will how will i have to adjust my calories after the booze consumption <laughs> following the pat's loss <laughs> i know man i you know i was watching the pat's game last night with my wife and I was telling her, I'm like, babe, I'm like, don't worry about it. The Pats will come back. They always come back in the fourth. And, man, it, they, were, they were trying hard, man. You could see the frustration um, in Tom Brady's eyes trying to get this – trying to get that done like it was it was intense man they they just couldn't make it happen it really stunk but you know it it is what it is <laughs> oh man lewis like you just sound so ignorant dude why would you even say that that's ridiculous Ah, Chris, they're not cheaters, man. They they train their butts off in order to be the best. That's just how they get there. Bagarv Koloi, bro, I recently gained 10 kilograms body weight, 53 kilograms to 63 kilograms, but I'm constantly at 63 kilograms even during workouts daily. Can you please tell me what's the reason and give me a better solution? I mean, that's a loaded question, man. You're you're gonna have to go to my forums on my website. Um, I'll type it in for you, muscularstrength.com/forums. You're gonna have to go to my forums, and you're gonna have to post like your current workout, your current macros, your height, your weight, your age, all that stuff. I mean, it, it, it's not a question that I can just answer without knowing a lot more information. And if you go to the forums and you type all that stuff out there. Um, we'll certainly be able to help you. Any tips for staying motivated? You guys want to know something interesting. So like, you know, all of a sudden I started wearing all kinds of superhero stuff in my, in my workout videos in, in my, on my channel. And it was, it was more of a move for motivation than anything else. Like I just got sick and tired of wearing the same workout clothes all the time. And I wanted to, I wanted to kind of tap into my childhood a bit, and when I when I originally started working out, my motivation came from my superheroes and my comic books, and I was you know poking around online. I started finding finding all um all the Dragon Ball Z clothing and all the DC and Marvel clothing, and I just started buying it up. And then I'd go to the gym and you know I'd look in the mirror, not necessarily at myself, but like if I'm wearing like a Superman T-shirt or a Vegeta tank top. I would look in the mirror and I would see, you know, the clothing and it would kind of remind me of some of something that would what what inspired me when I was younger to start training and that was kind of like motivating for me. And I mean, motivation can also come from doing other things in your life that give you joy. So for example, I started my own I started a gaming YouTube channel. Uh, it's called Older Humanity and I've been going at it now for about a month and it's been doing really well. And it's just gaming is another passion of mine, gaming and anime and to really start to bring that back into my life and share it with all of you on my other channel, that's actually been a motivating factor for me to actually go to the gym and train harder just because I'm bringing happiness into my life. So motivation doesn't necessarily have to come from like getting pumped up or like watching a video that gets you cranked or listening to music that gets you pumped up. Motivation for fitness can come from bringing happiness and joy into your life from something that's totally unrelated to fitness. I mean, 
maybe you go out and find the love of your life or you get a new job or you know you get a new car or you you know buy some clothes that you really like it, it, motivation can come from all these different things and then f it'll it'll start to funnel into your motivation to want to go to the gym and train harder or at least it does for me yeah fitty humanity oh thank you so much family and fit you are too kind my friend thank you so much John Tekunam, will you get into tailoring? Dang, it's hard to read these comments. Uh, let me see here. Scotty, will you get into tailoring and menswear anytime soon in your adult life? Uh, what do you mean, like coming out with my own clothing line? Can you be more specific, John? Canwar Seen Gill, creatine good for maintaining muscle and strength in cutting. Okay, so that's a good question. There's, there's always, always, always creatine questions that come up, and I have a, I have a, an answer for creatine that might sound complicated, but it's really not. And it's, it has to do with molecules. Okay, so I'm gonna break down creatine for you guys in the most basic form. Um, so your body uses adrenaline triphosphate. It's kind of like the process in which your body uses energy when you work out, right? So adrenaline triphosphate is called triphosphate because there's three creatine molecules. As you start exercising, um, the energy gets broken down and it loses a creatine molecule. So it becomes androgen, androgen diphosphate. And I might be pronouncing it wrong. I pronounce a lot of things wrong, so don't don't hang me up by that. <laughs> but basically, through the process of exercising, you're losing creatine molecules, and your body naturally already stores creatine from the food you eat in your skeletal muscle tissue. Your skeletal muscle tissue is basically all the muscles you see when you look in the mirror, right? So what happens when you when you stop doing an exercise during your rest period is your body starts to release those creatine molecules to resynthesize the adrenaline uh, diphosphate back into adrenaline triphosphate, right? So all that's happening, guys, when you take creatine is you're loading your skeletal muscle tissue with more creatine, which is going to basically allow you to train longer and hotter because you have more molecules of creatine in your reserves to replenish your energy. So creatine is not necessarily building muscle. What it's doing is it's help giving you the energy to train hotter and longer, which can result in more muscle growth. So I hope that answers your question and speaking of creatine you need to drink a lot of water and i need a sip of water right now yeah maybe yeah atp adenosine triphosphate yeah i told you i was probably going to pronounce it wrong it's late it's like 11 o'clock at night right now here's a good question guys brandon Meza. I'm 5'10 and 270 pounds. Hold on one second. Uh, where'd your question go? I'm 5'10 and 270 pounds and weightlifting for about two hours, four times a week. Is eating less than 2,000 calories good for a calorie deficit, taking 100 grams of carbs, 150 protein? Honestly, man, at 5'10, you probably don't want to go any lower than 2,000 calories. I'm 5'10, about 185 pounds. Um, so you have almost 100 pounds on me, so I can assume you're trying to lose weight at this point. You know, for you, you still want to stick around those 2,000 calories, but you may have to make sure you're doing the right workout. So, for example, if you're going to the gym and you're doing, like, biceps one day, chest and back one day, legs another day, that's not the workout you should be doing. You should be focusing on more of, like, a push-pull legs type routine. Uh, and the reason why I say push pull legs, if you go to my website, musculostrength.com, or if you search on, on YouTube, Scott Herman, push pull legs, you'll find my program and it'll lead you to my website. And on my website, I actually have it structured. So you're you're doing circuits and push pull legs. So you're building a, a, a structured foundation that you can later build upon to lift heavier and get stronger, but you're also incorporating circuits and cardio to ensure that you are burning the sufficient amount of calories that you need to burn to mobilize that fat and get rid of it so I don't know what kind of workout you're doing like yeah you're lifting for two hours four times a week but what are you doing for those two hours you know maybe you're doing maybe those two hours are two hours of the wrong workout so uh, my website has forums as well so if you want to you can post in the forums and give us more information so 
maybe do that and then we can help you there our community on my website guys if you haven't joined my site yet we have about a hundred and twenty thousand people on my site and it's it's really awesome I'm gonna link it for you guys it's muscularstrength.com you know I'm basically just all about trying to give you guys as much community support as possible and the site really helps me with that Tom Cotter he already had no I didn't say drop sets were useless um, I don't think you watched the video DC T big killer 30 <laughs> interesting name by the way um, and a lot of people oh that's great dog gone I'm glad my alcohol video helped you all right so I noticed on my video where I said drop sets are useless in the title a lot of people just kind of read the title and then then automatically assumed the video was about drop sets being useless and and that's not what the video was about the video was about people who utilize drop sets in such a way that let's say for example you know you can bicep curl you know 80 pounds for eight reps right so I see people in my gym who can bicep curl 80 pounds for eight reps do a drop set and instead of doing 80 pounds for eight reps they'll do like 60 pounds for eight reps and then 50 pounds for eight reps so what they're actually doing is they're decreasing the initial overload on their biceps for set one so that they can add an additional drop set and still be able to lift heavier weight because maybe if they did the the eight repetitions with 80 pounds for the second rep for the second set of eight they'd only be able to do like 40 pounds and obviously the, their ego their ego would explode if like a cute girl was watching them bicep curl 40 pounds you know <laughs> we're past that hopefully most of us and the reason why this is important guys is because the purpose of a drop set is and if you watch the video this is what you would have learned purpose of a drop set is to utilize the first eight repetitions and it doesn't have to be eight reps guys I'm just saying eight it could be it could be six it could be eight it could be ten it could be fifteen it could be whatever you want okay but I'm just gonna say eight you utilize the first eight repetitions to lift as heavy as you absolutely can all right to overload your muscles as much as possible and then as soon as those eight reps are done you lower the weight and then you do another eight repetitions but on those eight repetitions yeah you're still lifting heavy but the focus of the second eight is while your muscles are already pre-exhausted from the overload you are then going to utilize the pre-exhausted the pre-exhaustion of your muscles to focus on a higher contraction at the top of the movement and then a deeper stretch at the bottom of the movement you can apply this to any muscle group that you do and that was the point of me saying drop sets are useless they're useless if you do them wrong just like anything else sky stew cut cobs or fat to lose fat exactly family and fit I intensity equals effort equals gains I like the way you think um, cut cobs or fat to lose fats well honestly sky stew I mean it, it, it comes down to a little bit of both you know obviously if you're eating like over 200 grams of fat a day and you're my size that's a little bit too much fat it's a lot of calories it's nine calories per gram for fat remember that it's, it's more than double carbs and protein um, but it, if you're trying to lose weight you still need your carbohydrates it's still gonna be carbs for energy what you can do if you guys are starting to do some cutting now this is what I do when I'm cutting right if I'm bulking my meal plan is pretty much consistent every single day but when I'm trying to look a bit more trim what I do is on days I don't work out I just drop my carbohydrates so let's say normally on a normal day I eat like 250 grams of carbs on days that I don't work out I'm gonna drop those carbohydrates down to like 150 and I'm just gonna alternate like that and basically what's happening is you don't need as much energy on days you don't work out so by reducing that carbohydrate intake on those days what that's gonna allow you to do is not have to worry about storing that excess calories as fat on your body so it's a little bit of everything when it comes to cutting and hopefully the beginning of this video kind of spelled that out for you too are BCAAs really worth it do they help well so with BCAAs guys um, obviously I'm a BSN athlete and I use BSN's amino X 
and one of the main things in there is leucine. Now, leucine is important. The more leucine you have in your system, the more it promotes protein synthesis in your body, which is when your body is, you know, rebuilding muscle mass, all right? So, obviously you can go overboard with anything. You I take my aminos basically once a day, either in the morning or if I don't feel like drinking just water during my workout, I want something with a little more taste, I'll do the BCAAs during my workout. But anytime you can put more leucine into your bloodstream and promote obviously more protein synthesis, especially if you're training really hard, that's going to be a good thing. So don't look at BCAAs as like a muscle builder. Look at it more as an enhancement to help to help your body recover and build versus like actually building the muscle, if that makes sense. Sodium intake while cutting. I actually have a, a video um, Instead of answering this question specifically, Bertha Hodge, type in on YouTube, Scott Herman salt intake. This video will blow your mind. A lot of people eat very, very little salt or they eat too much salt, but not necessarily, it's not that they're eating too much salt, it's that they're eating table salt, which is horrendous for your body. You should not be consuming table salt. You should be consuming like Himalayan pink salt. That's what I actually have. And I put that on everything. Like I just made, I made a meal prep last night. I cooked a ton of food and we can talk about meal prepping too. I cooked a ton of rice and I cooked a ton of chicken. And man, when I, when I'm cooking, I take out, I take that salt and I'm just like, you know, throwing it on everything. Just like that guy with the meat, you know, cause I don't, I don't do it down my forearm because I'd probably make a mess. <laughs> Oh, Graham, thank you so much for the dollar donation, man. So obviously the um, the live chat is not showing up on my stream because I messed it up, but I'll have that fixed for next time, guys. Sorry about that. Hey, what's up, Nat, huh? Maurice, you cut salt out five years ago? All salt or just bad table salt? What's a good recovery for Dom's? You should be fully recovered after about two days, Josh. And a lot of times, if you're not recovering fast, maybe you should be incorporating some stretching and foam rolling after your workout and the following morning so that your body can actually start to loosen up a bit quicker. So Sabre Iglesias, talk about the anabolic window. All right, that's actually a good topic. Um, if you guys would like to hear some really good information about the, an the anabolic window, type one and press enter in the live chat. And this can actually, and then we'll go into more cutting advice as well. Yes, you need the iodine. Exactly, John. Table salt doesn't have the iodine in it. Antonio Ramos, we'll get back to cutting uh, in a moment. All right, here we go. We got all these ones coming in. Now, everyone um, put number two and hit enter uh, if you think I'm sexy. <laughs> Let's see how many twos we get. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Thank you, Rich Knight. Thank you very much. <laughs> you guys. You guys are too kind. <laughs> oh, man. Now we're just getting some random numbers. Okay, so... Well, let's talk about the anabolic window. <laughs> um, I'm going to lay some information on you guys. I do have a video that goes really deep into detail about the anabolic window. And if you want to watch that video, I recommend you watch it after the stream is over because it's going to give you more details that I'm going to give you now. Um, yeah, I'm 5'10", Anthony. So, <laughs> Faisal, 1010 Woodbang, thank you so much. <laughs> so guys, when it comes to anabolic window, and this is actually where there's a lot, this is where a lot of misinformation comes um, from online and programming. And if you're having a hard time finding the right program, ah, oh, our new new, thank you so much for the donation, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you guys, you guys ever like go online and try to find a new bodybuilding program or a new muscle gain program or like who, who's that tool bag that puts those ads that I see like even on my own videos where he's like, stop watching this video. You're not going to learn how to do a program by watching a video like it just really boils my my blood when I see stuff like that because it's like, dude, 
you're putting an ad out telling people to go to your page and i bet it's probably just as much trash and bs as everybody else's because everybody tries to overcomplicate a program now a lot of people ask questions like what's better training you know doing a push pull legs twice a week right so you're training you know six days a week or doing a five day bodybuilding split yeah it's probably v shred i think that's who it is so annoying so you guys have probably heard mixed things, and I want to see in the comment sections. Have people told you that doing a five-day split is basically pointless for muscle growth because you're only training each muscle once a week? Have you guys been told that before? Oh, you saw my cot, JGs? Oh, that's so funny, man. Yeah, that's where I'm, I live in Salem my whole life. I'm happy to help you, unknown person. All right, good. So you, you guys have obviously heard that. So here's the thing. The anabolic window, and I'm going to talk about for natural athletes, and I'm going to talk about um, douchebags who are on steroids but lie about it, athletes. All right? So the anabolic window for a natural athlete is basically going to last like two days. All right? So if you're going to the gym, right, and you're training chest, after about two days, that anabolic window for chest is gone. So basically, like, muscle growth for your chest is going to stop after two days, like three days max, all right? So it makes sense, logically, that if the anabolic window is going to be completely over after, after three days, that you should train your chest again on that fourth day to, get, to keep the anabolic window open and to keep muscle growth growing, right? So that's why routines like push-pull legs are so effective because you're able to keep that anabolic window open for your entire body for continuous growth because you're training the same muscle groups pretty much every three days where you'll do push-pull legs, push-pull legs, rest, push-pull legs. So you're training your muscle groups, you know, basically two to three times a week. So that's going to maximize the anabolic window for you as a natural athlete. Now, if you do a five-day split, then obviously you're not you're not sitting in the same area. So you're training like, let's say you're training chest. Oh, hold on, we have a donation from Graham. I'm six six, three years lifting. Can you think of ways to train maybe different for tall people? Um, yes, I can. Let me. I'll get back to you in one second after I finish my thought here. So if you're doing a five day bodybuilding split and you train chest, like let's say every Monday, so you train chest Monday, the anabolic windows open like Tuesday and maybe it closes by Wednesday. So that means Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you're getting no gains on your chest. And that might seem like a bad thing, right? Well, if you're someone like me where I'm really not trying to gain that much more muscle, like I'm 5'10", 185 pounds. I pretty much like the size that I am that I'm at right now. I look really good in the gym when I'm working out and I can fit normal clothing when I go out with my wife. Like I am happy at, you know, where I'm at. Pretty much for me, the only things that are going to change is if I have a photo shoot coming up, I might get more ripped. So, if I enjoy doing a 5-day bodybuilding split, I will still see gains doing that 5-day split. I'm just not going to see them as fast as somebody doing a push pull legs because they're training each muscle group twice a week. And that's the difference, guys. The difference is you get faster results with a push pull legs because you're keeping that anabolic window open longer versus doing five day splits where you're training only each muscle group once a week. And that should be what that should really clear things up for you guys. Does that make sense? Can you guys let me know in the comment section if that made a lot more sense versus people just telling you five day splits are dumb versus doing a push pull legs or full body workouts? Um, push pull legs is basically your push workouts are anything where you're pushing. So like chest or triceps or shoulders, stuff like that. So, and then pull obviously is back or biceps, all right? And then maybe traps. So, now when it comes to people who are on steroids, that's where things get really different because what happens when you're on steroids? Average testosterone levels is going to be for a male, right? You're going to. All right, are we back? All right, sorry about that, guys. So, 
average testosterone level is like 250 to 1,020 nanograms per deciliter for an average male. When you start doing steroids, your testosterone levels go from that average of 250 to 1,000 to like four to 5,000, which is a huge jump. And what that means in terms of the anabolic window is that basically your, your anabolic window is wide open 24-7. And that's why, you know, you can go to the gym and do, like, the most terrible workout with the worst form. You know, you can go to the gym and, like, I, I say this in my video when I talk about the five exercises I hate. If you're on anabolic steroids, you can go to the gym and do 21s for your biceps and your biceps are going to get huge because of that huge increase in testosterone and your anabolic window is fully blown open. So that's the main differences, guys, when it comes to anabolic window and picking the right program. It's not necessarily that one program is better than the other, unless it's like V-Shred and those crappy programs. <laughs> um, it's not necessarily that one program is better than the other. It's whatever whatever your goal is. So if you want really fast results, I suggest picking a program where you're training your body parts multiple times a week. If you don't need to grow as fast, you'll still see gains doing like a five-day split. All right, back to – hold on. Let me get to um, – let me get to, let's see here, the question, um, where'd it go? Is it going to be down in my super chat? Oh, here we go. Okay, Graham. Um, six, six, three years lifting. Can you think of ways training might be different for tall people versus short people? Uh, donating for years of free knowledge. So thank you so much for the $5 donation, Graham. Really means a lot. Um, I actually was thinking about this the other day, to be honest with you. And this is a really good question. How many of you guys – here we go. We got 5027, tall versus short. How many of you think that there's a huge difference between being tall in training and being short in training in terms of, like, form and whatnot? Just waiting for the comments to pour in. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So there, there is a difference. Um, the main difference is, and I, I even noticed this growing up too. So like one of my friends I always lifted with was short. And he could always lift so much more than me because his limbs, his limbs were obviously shorter. Like he, he could, he'd shoulder press at like 120s and he'd be going like this, but this would be full range of motion for him because his arms were so short. So he'd just be like, boop, 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 boop. You know, it was like watching a little baby lift that had huge muscles. It was, it was horrible. And then I'd, you know, be grabbing like the sixties when I'm 18 struggling. He's grabbing the one twenties, banging them out like they're nothing. So in terms of how much weight you can lift, I, there's going to be a big difference. But that difference can also be offset over time because if you're a bigger human being, you obviously have the potential to build more muscle, which can lead to you being a lot stronger eventually. So I feel like in the beginning of your, your workout training that if you're working out with someone who's much shorter than you and you're really tall – they might be lifting more than you just because their limbs are shorter. But over time, as your big lanky body turns into like a huge buff one, you're going to get a lot stronger just because you're bigger. Like it's just the, how it works, right? However, when it comes to exercises like, for example, like a pendlay row or a deadlift or exercises where you're, you're picking things up off the ground, that's where I think that things start to get – um, a bit different and I'll explain what I mean. So you guys know what a what a deficit deadlift is, right? A deficit deadlift is when you are standing like on a 45 pound 45 pound plate as you're doing a deadlift to work the the short the, the lower range of motion of a deadlift. And the reason why you stand on a plate is so that you can make that barbell um, basically be closer to your to your ankles to perform the movement. So if you're really tall, okay, like I'm 5'10", so when I walk up to do a deadlift, the barbell is in the, the exact right position it needs to be in for me to reach down and grab it. But if you're like 6'6", like you are, Graham, and you step up to a barbell, 
the the difference in height is basically kind of how I am when I'm doing a deficit deadlift. Because you're so much taller and bigger, when you reach down to grab things, it might screw up your form a little bit, and it can affect you on exercises where you're pulling off the ground. I mean, in terms of like squatting, I mean, it's still the same range of motion. When you're benching, it's still the same range of motion. Granted, you have more for the bar to travel up and down. And if you're squatting, you have to go lower and higher because you're bigger. But in terms of, like, should you have different form when you squat or bench? No, the form is still the same. It's still the same range of motion, except that when you're taller, you have more range of motion to go. And you shouldn't really complain, because if I was 6'6 and, like, weighed 280 pounds... I would be playing football with the Patriots. Maybe they would have won the Super Bowl last night. <laughs> All right, what's going on over here with this Jake dude? <laughs> Max Lobovich, I love you, no homo. I love you too, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, my neck definitely did grow, Kazen. I took a lot of advice from my boy Alpha Death. All right, we're back. Yeah, I've been taking advice from my, my boy Alpha Destiny. Doing heavy rack pulls above the knees has been helping me a lot with those neck gains. I can actually flex them now and they and they pop out, which is nice. Twisted Gamer. Scott is into men confirmed. I mean, I'm married to a woman, so, I mean, yeah, bring the dudes over, I guess, right? Totally makes sense. I've only been married for like five years. Um, Azim Valley, my other channel, my other channel is Oh the Hermanity. There we go. Can I tell you guys, you guys want to know, um, something really exciting? Push one and hit enter if you want to know something really exciting. I'm actually really excited about it. And I will share this information with you. Bicep tendonitis and lifting. Nat Ha, I have a video called Bicep Pain. Please click on that and watch it. It will change your life, okay? Damn, we got lots of ones. This is, I should have been doing these live shows like all the time. Okay, guys, here, I'm going to lay it on you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop it down right now. I am building my dream home in Orlando, Florida as we speak. And this house is so friggin awesome I am going to take my studio all my gym equipment so all my videos you guys see me film all of that is going to be in my house and I'm basically gonna be able to wake up drink coffee take a poop after my coffee which is pretty much every morning but the only difference is I'll be able to walk 20 feet to my gym where I will have high speed internet and all kinds of all my equipment there and I'll not only be able to film more videos but I will be able to do live workouts with you guys like all the time or live Q&As like this in my studio teaching you guys stuff all the time and you like you guys have no idea how excited I am about that and that's that's to be honest that's one of the main reasons why how do I increase my overall speed, Rich Knight? I'll get to that in a second. But I'll tell you what, guys. Like, that has been a dream of mine for a while because a lot of times when I when I film, I get, like, a really good idea, right? And my, my studio where I film is, like, it's only 15 minutes away. But I got to pack all my gear into my car, drive to the studio, unpack all my gear. In the wintertime, it's cold as hell, so I got to turn on the heat because the studio is cold. Wait for it to warm up, unpack all my stuff, put on my workout clothes, and it's like two hours later at that point, and I just want to go home. <laughs> and it just, it just, it, you know, I've been doing it now for like five years, and I've had enough. So I'm really excited about this, guys. I think this is going to be great. How long is the morning poop? Um, it depends. It really depends on how much stamina I have left on my Dokken battle game on my phone. <laughs> because if I have full stamina, I might be pooping for a good 20, 25 minutes until all that stamina is gone. <laughs> yes, I do like that show, Archer. That show is hilarious. All right, let's see. 
thank and thank you so much, guys. And let me just tell you guys, you know, none of this would be possible if it wasn't for you. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot to me. Is using the hot tub good or bad after you work out? That's ah, fine, man. I wish I had a hot tub for after I, I worked out. I'm sure that'd be nice and relaxed, relaxing. So, yeah. So, I am from Boston, bro. Um, but I, I'm from Lawrence, Massachusetts. is where I grew up. So, that's why my accent is a little different than somebody who grew up in, like, Southie. Boston in general, the accent, the Boston accent will change from, you know, depending on where you live in Boston. And as you go further, further north, closer to like where I lived in Lawrence, uh, the accents diluted a little bit. That's why I don't sound like, you know, how the people sound in that movie, The, the, the Departed. Granted, a lot of words I say do sound like that, but I don't have like that real thick Boston accent like that Wahlbergs do. <laughs> yeah, Faisal. <laughs> and you should be doing a lot of them then, right, bro? <laughs> Are you partial to a particular... Nah. To be honest, guys, I'm way more into anime than I ever have been into sports. So, like, you know, I I'd rather watch... Like, I was watching cartoons on my phone when the Super Bowl was on. Like, I just don't care. I watched the halftime show, which was amazing. And then I watched the last ten minutes just to see who would win. The programming channel, going to try five-day split first. Nice, man. If you want to try my five-day split, go to the program section on my website, musculostrength.com, right there. Hi, Scott. Any tip for skinny, fat guys like me want to gain muscle and lose weight too, which is my priority? So, Ankit Sharma, I actually have a whole video on... Oh, you have the last remaining English accent? That's a hilarious thing. I have a whole video where it's literally titled Skinny Fat. And you should watch that video. Uh, just type in Scott Herman Skinny Fat and that video will pop up. And the number one reason why most people are skinny fat is usually because they're not eating enough food and doing the right training program. And a lot of times what happens is as you start eating enough food, most people are eating way less than they need to. As you start increasing your calories, your body is going to start to hold on to more muscle tissue. Like you'll probably hold on to 5 to 10 pounds more muscle just from eating more food versus even going to the gym. Because you could be so calorie deprived right now and that's why you're skinny fat. So... Basically, it's going to come down to a few different things. Um, you can post more about yourself in my forums. They're totally free to use. Uh, webs I'm typing it right now for you, musculostrength.com slash forums. You know, our community is growing. We're like 120,000 people. So they're, I'm on there daily, and we have a lot of great people there that are helping out as well. So when are you going to buy yourself a katana to chop your pumpkins? What? <laughs> fitness foundation of knowledge does masturbation affect your gains no it doesn't <laughs> it's a very easy answer here we go Hamish McWan calorie bulking question uh, here we go taking uh, I've switched to bulk after cutting I'm 5'10 163 pounds my job is lightly active does 2,800 calories on rest day and 3,300 calories on workout day sound about right? So, Hamish, those numbers sound okay to, like, start, right? What I would do if I were you is I would, I would track that every single day for the next two to three weeks. And then after the next two to three weeks, if you're not noticing any changes in your body, then it, you probably need to make an adjustment and get your calories a tiny bit higher Maybe closer to like 3,000 on a rest day, 3,500 to 3,800 on a workout day. But it's all it's all going to be like a – it's a game. It's a give and take kind of thing. You have to eat the same for a certain amount of time while basically looking in the mirror and tracking your mirror gains, we'll call it, 
And then based on what you see in the mirror after three weeks, you should know if you have zero results, you need to increase your calories. Um, if you are seeing results, then you're probably fine. And then if you're starting to put on too much fat, then clearly you're not in your cutting calories and you've got to start to reduce. And if you're seeing steady progress, then keep eating those calories until the progress stops and then increase your food again. And if you guys are enjoying the stream, please show some love and smash that like button like as many times as you possibly can. Um, just make sure that it's not an even amount of times because if you smash it twice, you basically like and then unlike the video and then that wouldn't be well. But if you want to smash it three times, that's okay. <laughs> if you smash it three times, you get a wifer. I think that's how it goes, right guys? Is that how the song goes? If I hit it three times, I got a wifer or whatever the heck. Yeah, I'm not a rapper. <laughs> Jim Kim, thank you so much for the donation. Hi Scott, really enjoying your channel. Can I work out seven days a week with no break day as long as I'm okay? People say different things on the internet. So that's a loaded question, Jim Kim, because it depends on what you're doing each day. So like, like for example, let's say you're doing push-pull legs, right? And you do push workout Monday, and then you do like cardio with a bit of abs on Tuesday, then you do pull workout Wednesday, cardio and abs on Thursday, uh, legs on Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday you do like a light circuit or cardio and abs. There's nothing wrong with that. If you work construction and you lift like heavy bricks all day and heavy wood all day and heavy shingles all day, technically you're like doing a light workout like cardio and, like cardio and abs would be, right? So it really depends on what you're doing every single day of the week. Granted, you should also keep in mind that your body only grows when you rest. So if you're not noticing any growth or any change in your body, it might be time to try to stick a rest day in there to ensure that your body is fully recovering so that you can actually see gains from all the hard work that you're doing. I hope that answers your question. My respect for Scott just increased. Well, thank you so much, Fitness Foundation. Now you can go masturbate all day, now that you know. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so much fun chatting with you guys. Um, It's okay, I've been taking creatine when I'm 17. Yeah, I mean, creatine is already in your body, um, my bro, so taking a little more is not going to hurt you. Oh, Kayla Rocks, you are so welcome. Thank you so much for the donation. You guys, I haven't asked for one donation this whole thing, and you guys have already donated like 20 bucks. I just want to say, you guys are the best. Thank you so much for your donations and support. This is really cool. You, oh, good, Jim Kim. You heard my answer. Awesome. Uh, will training glutes with low reps, high weight make me better at sex? All right, now we're getting a little off topic, Fitness Foundation. <laughs> I mean, I don't know any woman that w that necessarily picks a man that can hip thrust a lot of weight. Like, I don't know if a woman sees that and she's like, oh, man, that dude's hip thrusting 700 pounds. I wonder what he can do to me. Like, I think she'd be scared, honestly. <laughs> Especially if you're screaming while doing it. <laughs> um, let's see. Hey, that love is appreciated, my friend. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Johnny. Shouting out my Skype consultations. That's how we met, bro. <laughs> and now we play Dokken Battle together. <laughs> What form of protein do you recommend? That's actually a really good question. So I have two different brands of protein. Well, not two different brands. I have, um, I'm obviously, I'm a BSN sponsored athlete. So I use BSN's branded protein. And I use Synthesis Edge usually more towards the end of the day because the carbs are super low. And then I use the isolate version usually earlier in the day because it has a, a bit more carbohydrates in it. Because the way I eat is I try to load all my carbohydrates in the morning. And then usually after 5 or 6 o'clock, I try to wean it down and stick to mostly proteins and fat. Just how my body handles food the best. If I eat a lot of carbs at night, I tend to hold a bit more body fat and I don't want to. So that's pretty much the reason why I switch it up. Oh, let's go back down here. Um, so Synthesis 6 is a mixture of whey and casein, doggone. That's why I use the Synthesis 6. Whether it's the edge or the isolate, it's a combination of uh, whey and casein. 
<laughs> yeah, John Telequan, right? Exactly. Uh, does a lot of stretching hurt my growth? Actually, no, Justin. Stretching is really good for your growth. Stretching is going to basically help your body um, get rid of and bring in new vital oxygen and nutrients and things that you need in order to see growth. Um, I actually did a video talking about how flexing and stretching in between sets can even help you with your gains throughout your workout. If you haven't seen that video, make sure you check it out. What's your recommendation for pre-workout again? Uh, Fenir Unchained. So I use I use NO Explode, but I'll tell you what, BS, it's by BSN. BSN came out with a can form of their endo rush guys holy crap like that has been my workout of choice now for the last two months it just gets me so wired and it's continuously gotten me wired for the last two months and there's a blue raz version of it that tastes so friggin good if you guys haven't tried it yet um they sell the cans at like gnc or vitamin shop Seriously, like, go there, try it, and, like, post a, a selfie after your workout where you're flexing your guns, and then hashtag me so I can see it. Because it's going to get you, like, feeling insane. It's it's insane. Is this a workout live stream or a Tide Pod commercial? I don't understand what that means. <laughs> yeah, Fiddy, Blue Raz is the GOAT. All right, come on, Fitness Foundation. Let's, like, I don't know why you're so interested. Like, every question you have is, like, about your penis. Let's, like, get the penis off the mind and think about something else. We'll just move on. <laughs> don't worry, Fenir. It's getting better. Hey, hey, good morning, Garage Wankade. Oh, yeah, yeah. My daughter was telling me about the Tide Pod, Tide Pod means meme you know you guys ever watch this show it's like it's called like my crazy addiction and there was this chick who literally ate laundry detergent like she'd walk in the laundry room and close the door and she'd lick her finger and then stick it in the laundry detergent and then she would smell it and then eat it like six times a day like that is gross oh my gosh rich knight how do i get faster well, getting faster has to do with being a bit more explosive. Um, and you can do explosive squats. You can do explosive sled pulls. Um, I actually have a few videos. If you type in Scott Herman Speed on YouTube, that should definitely help. My favorite book, Think and Grow Rich. That is a really good book if you guys haven't read it. I mean, a lot of the books that I read usually have to do with business. And that is a great book. I'm going to see if I can find that video for you um, real quick. Uh, here's one. Increase your speed and explosiveness. Hey, everyone. I'm Scott Herman from ScottHermanFitness.com and Sears Fit Studio. And welcome to Speed Up. This is going to be a routine to help increase your overall speed. and. Oh, my God. This video is so old. My younger brother, Christopher, is in it. And he is so young. Here you go. Check that out. When I do incline, my left shoulder starts hurting. Uh, if your shoulders hurt during an incline chest press, it's usually because... I'll lean back really quick. It's usually because you're like this. And instead of tucking your elbows in... There's like a lag on the video, guys. Give me a second so I can see myself. Okay. Usually, if you don't have your elbows tucked in as you press... If you have them flared out like that, then that's when you're going to start to have a lot of pressure and pain in your shoulders. So that could be exactly what it is. Um, I'm not sure, BM Gippy 45 I haven't done much research on that. Oh, yeah, Morgan. We still eat those protein pancakes. They are so good. Uh, Dan Danny Hill. I mean... If you're having a hard time gaining upper body mass, it could be you're not eating enough food or not doing the right program. You got you can come to my forums. I'll, I'll put the link there again. If you want to, come to my forums and we can take a look at your program. 
How to do a mini cut, Dan Ka. Well, we talked about that a lot in the beginning of the video, basically cutting in general. Um, if you're trying to cut, the best thing that you should start doing, if you're clearly you're not obviously on a cut now, is start lowering your calories like 250 to 300 every couple weeks, like every two weeks, right? And then maybe start incorporating 15 to 20 minutes of hit cardio after your workouts, not before, after your workouts, two, maybe three times a week. So start off with just a little calorie reduction and a little bit of cardio and start to monitor your body and see how it reacts to that after a few weeks. A lot of, a lot of times, guys, cutting comes down to, you know, trial and error. Reduce your calories a little bit, increase your cardio a little bit. See how your body reacts to that and then make changes after two to three weeks. Like don't don't reduce your calories and stack cardio. Then after a week, think that you're failing if you don't see results. Like it takes time to see these things, especially as a natural athlete. So just start to lower those calories, increase that cardio a little bit and see how you do. <laughs> Antonio, there was lots of cutting advice in like the very, very beginning of the video um so sorry if you joined a little late <laughs> uh rope push downs plus tricep cable kickbacks a sufficient triceps workout um not really daniel because you'll never really be able to overload your triceps with maximum weight doing a push down um you'll be able to lift kind of heavy but not nearly as heavy as you could do with a weighted dip or a close grip bench press for, for your arms, I would always start off with really heavy dips, whether you need assistance or not, really heavy dips or really heavy close grip bench press. And then if you want to go into a more of an isolation movement like a seated overhead extension or a tricep pushdown, I would do that. <laughs> Sauna on a cut, bad for muscle loss. Uh, not as long as you're drinking enough water, man. Any tips on new fitness YouTubers, Joey Klosser? Honestly, man, it just comes down to being consistent. That's it. That's how I grew my channel so big is I was just, I've been consistently uploading now for about 10 years. So if you're just starting out now, you, you gotta get, you gotta put the time in. But if you do put the time in, you will definitely grow. And if you want, you can always help the people in my forums, get your name out there. Um, you can post your YouTube videos. You can actually embed videos in my forums as well. So if you want to share your information with my community, you're more than welcome to do that. DBZ or Naruto? I mean, I like them both, but I'm always going to go with DBZ. Like, it's hands down. My current waist size and body fat percentage? That is a good question because I really don't know. I mean, I'm like probably 9 or 10% body fat right now. And my waist size, usually I stick from between 30 and 31. It doesn't really go much higher than that. And I wear the same pants every week, so I know it's still sitting around the same. <laughs> Juan Martin Graham. Okay, guys, I'm just going to answer a few more questions, and then I actually have some work I got to do. Um, my fitness motivation is Broly and Vegeta. That's my fitness motivation right there. So we had a question... Ah, uh, thank you, Natha. Appreciate that. So Juan Martin Garan says, Hey Scott, sorry for repeating. When I'm working my back, I feel my biceps engaging a lot and getting exhausted before my lats. How do I fix that? I actually talked about that in my lat pull down video I posted about a week ago. If you're having a really hard time and you're feeling your biceps more in all your back workouts, I want you to take your thumbs and I want you to put them on top of the bar so that your hands are more like hooks. Because a lot of times what happens is when we squeeze the barbell as hot as we can, whether it's a barbell or a dumbbell, when we squeeze it as hot as we can, we're tensing all the muscles in our forearms, which tends to tense the, the muscles in your arms a bit more as well. But if you put your thumb on top, it'll kind of mentally folk make you use your hands more like hooks, and you should be able to disengage your biceps and forearms enough to really start building that mind-muscle connection in your back. And then after that happens, you should be able to switch back to having your thumb underneath now that your body understands how to do things properly. Yeah, hook the bar, hook the bar. 
Uh, Tyler, if you just got into bodybuilding a couple months ago, you should stick with um, a good program. It's going to give you a good foundation. And don't even bother cutting. Like, if you just stick with a good program and a moderate diet where you're in a slight surplus, you will be able to post your form again. Here you go, Joey. Muscularstrength.com slash forums. If you're... Oh, I spelt it wrong. Forums. Like that. If you're just starting to work out, guys, like you should be in a slight surplus doing a push-pull legs program. That's what you should be doing. And you should just let your body start to transform on its own. Don't think that just because you worked out for two or three months, abs are going to come out of nowhere. Just like your biceps don't get huge overnight, neither will your abs. So just give it time. <laughs> nice one. Um, I wouldn't weigh myself every single day. That can be kind of demotivated. Um, Anthony, I really don't know at the top of my head. I mean, a good book to always go to can be the Arnold's Encyclopedia because there's a lot of good information in there. But I mean, with the rise of YouTube, fitness books are kind of kind of become irrelevant. And usually now, the only fitness books that you see get produced are ones that have some sort of gimmick attached to them. So can you really trust books nowadays yes and no all right guys so before we go i'm gonna wrap this up how many of you would like to see more sit down chats like this throughout the week push one if you guys like that All right, got lots of ones coming in. Damn, like a bazillion ones. So I'll tell you what, guys. Once this video is over, oh, thank you, Douchey69. <laughs> Great username. Thank you so much for the $2 donation. So, guys, can you do me a favor, okay? Once this video is over... If you guys can go down to the comment section of the video once it uploads and start leaving topic suggestions of what you would like to see be kind of like a main point. Like in this video, when the video first started, uh, we talked about, you know, cutting my tips for cutting without a crash diet. For those of you guys who joined obviously later, once the video is posted, you can rewatch the beginning and you can see my tips. Um... But if you guys can go back to the video and leave comments of what kind of topics you would like me to talk about, that would help me steer these Q&As in the right direction so that I can hang out with you guys and answer your questions as best to my ability. Um, now, for those of you who have questions that haven't been answered yet, um, I, I don't know if you guys realize this, but like my website is a social platform, right? You make a profile, you have a news feed, you can make friends with people. Um, and then once my app comes out in a few weeks, you'll be able to access everything through the app. And so if you have questions that I didn't answer, I mean, granted, we had like 2,000 questions come on the, uh, oh, thank you, man. <laughs> you are so nice, Family and Fit. Thank you so much. You're, you're awesome. You're really boosting my, my happiness. Um, but if you guys have questions, um, my forums are free to use. And I'll post them again. I know I mention them a lot, but it's because I really want you guys to get into the habit of using them because it's not just me in there answering questions. We, I have a whole community of super smart people that are in there helping on a daily basis. And this is them right here. You guys can make, um, you can make free profiles. You can join as a platinum member for one month free. Um, when you sign up, you'll see the option. You'll see a promo code that'll give you access to my custom meal plan app. That'll give you access to all my programs. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fitness and gaming. I'm going to be doing a, a live stream on my gaming channel tomorrow. So my gaming channel is Ola Hermanity. So make sure you guys check that out. Uh, thank you, Guron Wonkade. Trust him, guys. His website is dope. It, you know, it really is. And it's getting better and better. So my app, so my app isn't done yet. Um, do you guys, do you guys want to see some app stuff really quick? I can show you on my phone. It won't be the best, but if you want to see it, 
um, push one and then put a heart symbol and then I'll do it. So one and then like, you know, the heart symbol. Here we go. This, this thing and then that thing. And then I'll do it. <laughs> oh, it makes a hat. Okay. One and a hat. <laughs> That's so funny. You guys actually, you want to know something exciting? I actually have a new intro coming. Um, it, it's really short. My my buddy Masta Media made it for me. He does all the Dragon Ball Super reviews. Um, it's like five seconds long, and it's basically like it's my monkey punching um, the screen and then telling you to download the app. It's freaking cool. Ah, Mario McGuire, you are so kind. Thank you so much. This has been so fun. I'm going to be doing this all the time. Like, my house isn't going to be built for like six months. So up until my house is built, we're doing this at least once or twice a week every single week. Ah, uh, thank you, family and fit. All right, so I don't know if you guys can see this. Um, hold on. So my app is basically, it's going to work in real time with my website, okay? And the first version of the app is not going to have all of the profile features ready yet. It's going to take me a couple weeks after I launch the initial version. The main version is basically for me to get you guys to be able to get access to all the programs, all the workouts, all the exercises, all the articles, all the recipes, and also my custom meal planner all in one place, okay? Yes, it syncs up with the site, John. So it's it's it works in real time. Anything you do on my app, it's going to be basically like Facebook. Anything you do on Facebook on your phone happens on the site. So it's really cool. Um, any good tunes or songs to train to? Just type corn, K-O-R-N, in iHeartRadio. All right, so check this out. Let me see. Uh, this lag is going to be a pain in the butt. All right, guys. I'm going to – um. well, you're not going to see this. I'm going to switch screens to my to my OBS so it's in real time for me so I can actually see what the heck I'm doing. So I'm not going to be able to read your comments for a second, but here, check this out. All right. Let's see. All right. So this is the platform for the app, right? So if you click on meal plan, oh yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be a little funky. Sorry guys. Let me if I stand up. Yeah. All right, we're gonna click on meal plan. And then it'll actually load the meal plan. Oh wait, no, this uh that was actually something they were fixing, but it will load the meal plan right there. Let's go to programs. That was like one of the last things they had to adjust before the app launched. So if you click on programs, every single program on the website is going to be in one spot, right? So you got my push-pull legs, five-day bodybuilding split, uh, power building 101 with my, bo my bro Brian, uh, bigger biceps in four weeks with uh, my buddy Reggie, and then bigger chest in four weeks with my buddy Jason. And you'll basically be able to click on those. And then all the videos will pop up in one spot. So you can see all the videos are right here. For those of you who are already on the website, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And then you'll have one push to go to the workout routine. And the whole routine will pop up right here. Let's give it a second. Boom. So all the workouts pop up. The calendars pop up. All the exercise photos pop up. It's really cool. And the screen just keeps going white because of the lighting in the room. And then for those of you guys who enjoy my articles and my recipes, they all pop up here um, in real time. So this is actually a video that was just released. If you guys probably watched it, five exercises I hate the most. So one of the things with YouTube, guys, YouTube just dicks over my channel all the time. So many of you guys don't get any notifications of my videos. Like, it's pathetic. And YouTube, I send them an email every week, and they basically tell me to go F myself in a nice way. They're like, oh, we're working on it. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure you are. But once my app is out, 
every time I release a video, I don't know if you guys know this, but every video for the past three or four years has been made into an article on my website. So you go to my website right now, you'll see this. But on the app, You'll be able to actually share to Facebook. So you see this one already has 387 shares. And then the video plays at the top. And then as you go through the, the article, you got photos, just like the article online, um, all kinds of good stuff. And then at the bottom, you have a nice about the author section right here. The author is me. And then once the social aspect is added in a few weeks, you'll be able to click this and go to my profile. So, and there's a lot more to the app than that, but I don't want to bore you guys too much. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Ah, uh, thank you, Garan Wonkade. That really means a lot. Oh, chronometer. No, but I'll, I'll type that in Google right now. Let me see. Chrono. Chronometer. I'll check that out later. Tell you something better than corn? Like, I don't, I don't understand the question. What's, what's better than corn? Like, corn is, like, at the top when it comes to lifting music. Carlos. So, Scott, I work nights as a 911 dispatcher. I work from midnight and get off at 8 a.m. I track macros at the gym with two days off. We recommend when it comes to eating. So... Honestly, Carlos, if you are uh, – the app isn't out yet, Trevor, but it will be muscular strength, Android and iPhone. Avenge Sevenfold is good. Well, if you type corn on iHot Radio, you basically get all of the bands that are within that genre. That's why I say corn. Um, I'm not sure. I think there's a money button right underneath where you type Juan Martin Garin. All right, so back to the dispatcher. If I were you, if you're sitting all day, I'd recommend doing like a, a low carb diet. So like 100 grams, maybe 150 grams, and then try to eat the majority of those carbs before, like an hour before your workout and then right after. I wouldn't eat a lot of carbs throughout the day where you're being sedentary. And just make sure while you're sitting, you're keeping that core tight. So you're sitting up straight like this and you're flexing your abs. Because the if you're sitting down all day and just let your stomach kind of hang out, things start to get loose. So flex those abs as hard as you can as you're sitting. Set a reminder in your phone to remind you. Anybody who works an office job, you guys should be setting reminders in your phone to flex your abs throughout the day to keep that core nice and tight. All right. Well, my friends, it is now time for me to sign off. Um, I will be live again tomorrow night, but it will be on my gaming channel, Oh The Her Manity. So if you guys want to hang out with me, subscribe to my other channel, and I will see you there tomorrow night. Uh, thank you so much, and remember, if you still have questions, you can post them in my forums, and my team and I will get to them as fast as possible to help you guys with your goals. So... Thank you so much. I uh, haven't played Fortnite yet, but I'm going to check it out. Thank you guys so much for your for your support and your love and your donations. It really means a lot to me. Um, and yeah, guys, as always, more good stuff coming soon. I cannot wait to go live again with all of you. This was a lot of fun. I'll see you guys later.